Yeah. Hi, everybody. Adrian here, and this is the introduction to Deepening Your Spiritual Path. Really fantastic to have you watching in live or listening to the recording. I'm just going to share a little bit of my insights, my wisdom, and my knowledge around my own journey, because that's all I can really refer to, and just giving some support to help you on your own spiritual journey, just to deepen that a little bit, or maybe a lot for you, just to really bring it in and get an understanding of the aspect of being on the spiritual journey, the power of that, when one brings spiritual life into one's life. Because the little analogy I like to use is, if we're driving along in a car and we have four wheels, and we relate those four wheels to the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual, if one of those tires is missing, or if the tires flat on one of those, it's going to affect the other three aspects of our life. And oftentimes, people look after their physical, to some degree their emotional and their mental, and oftentimes the spirituality is left out of their lives. But when we bring that spirituality in as our fourth wheel, it helps us to get more balance and we have a smoother drive through life. So uh, we'll start with that. I'm just going to um, share a little bit about um, this uh, on my forehead. Um, my partner is, uh, follows Ayurvedic practice, Indian practice, and uh, the goddess of the, um, of the Shakti. And we did a beautiful meditation this morning. And uh, she put the Agni Potna ash on my forehead as a blessing. Uh, so yes, it's not dirt, it's not grime. It's actually a blessing from the Agni Hotra ash from the Indian tradition. Uh, because there are many, many, many forms of spirituality. There are many different continents that bring in different spirituals. And I like to get a sense of not dismissing any of them, because finding one's spiritual path comes in many forms. You know, we have Christianity, we have Buddhism, we have many other aspects of finding one's path. And for me, there's no right or wrong path. There are many, many, many. But the point is, is deepening that path, learning some core values of what that path means for each and every one of us, each individual. So my own path is that of anthroposophy, which comes from my teacher, Rudolf Steiner, who's a Christian path. So it's based on the Christ principles. And it comes from a deeper understanding from a more esoteric perspective of the Rosicrucian stream. So not so much the modern day Rosicrucianism that you may read of, but more of a underground, uh, deep, long connection to that Rosicrucian. But uh, fundamentally, it's about the, the, the Christ, and about the story of uh, Jesus um, um, and the way he uh, was born as a man and then obviously came the Christ being with his uh, baptism. So that's where I've been studying for the last 30 plus years and following the pathway of uh, Christ. And uh, not in a church where I don't go to church. Um, I sort of got my own way of working with that through my lectures and my prayers and my meditations. So there are many, many, many forms of reaching it. But the point being, I find it's really important to have some spiritual connection into one life if you want to get that holistic perspective, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual. And in my own tradition, in my anthroposophical uh, following, in my Rosicrucian following, we have a few core principles that we follow, that I follow. And what I suggest to you is get really clear on your daily practice. What is your daily practice for your spirituality? There's meditation, there's prayer, there's devotion, there's working of service, there is going to the church or the synagogue or the mosque or wherever it is one goes or into nature many many things but getting the clarity of defining what your spiritual path is for you i find that's really 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 important so when i define my own spirituality i sum that up in a sentence and i say my spirituality personally is the next person i meet in other words what i mean by that is when i meet somebody the way I treat them is a reflection of how I'm living my spiritual life. If I treat them with kindness and reverence and non-judgment, 
and no reactions and no projections as much as I can, then it gives me a deeper sense of where I'm at on my journey, where I am today in my spiritual path. Because if I meet somebody and I have a hatred or a dislike or a judgment, I know I'm struggling in that spiritual connection. But if I can meet somebody openly and see them as a soul, as a spirit, then I've got a very different connection to my spiritual path and a connection to them. So there are a few things we can do daily to improve a spiritual connection. In my own tradition, through um, Rudolf Steiner's work, he brought a gift to us called the Seven Conditions of Spiritual Development. And the first one, and I want to speak about this a little bit um, today in this um, first webinar, the first condition for spiritual development is looking after the physical body. And the reason I speak about this is because I believe this is our temple. This was given to us by the Creator, by God, whatever you want to call it, by Source. And this is our temple. This is where everything happens for us. The soul is connected to the physical body. The spirit is imbued in the physical body. We can give service through the physical body. We can do devotion through the physical body. So for me, this is my temple. I really have to look after my temple. You know, you wouldn't go into your church or a synagogue or your mosque or into nature and defile that. And yet we do it so easily with the body. We have a disconnect to the temple, to the self. So the first thing for me always when I'm working with my students and my clients is let's look at our physical being. Let's look at this temple, this body. It's almost like a holy grail. And what are we doing with it? What are you doing with it physically, emotionally and mentally? How am I treating myself? How am I loving myself? If I really want to be in devotion to spirit, to people, and we want to put out that energy of love, which is the ultimate spiritual practice, then it has to begin with self. It has to begin with self. I have to find that self-love, that self-care, that self-worth. And for many, that's a really hard journey. A really hard journey. We have so many sabotage patterns going on where we dislike ourselves. We don't like the way we look, the way we walk, the way we do things in life. And we can look at the, the lack of what we have rather than the gifts we have. So a lot of it is coming back to self-love. And a really good metaphor I use this for this, and you can use this in a real sense, or you can use it as a metaphor, is if you stand in front of the mirror, either in real life or as a metaphor, and you look at yourself, can you truly say, yes, I love what I see? I love what I see. I live what I see. Physically, in terms of, yeah, there's beauty there, and I really have some sense of self-love and self-worth about the way I look or is it the opposite I really don't like the way I look because we've put ourselves there you know 99.9% .9 of the time we formed our own shape we've formed our own fitness we've formed our own health through our choices consciously or unconsciously but we can undo that. If there's something not feeling quite right, if the self-love and self-worth and self-care is not there, this might be a moment to bring it from a higher perspective, from the spiritual perspective of understanding that this is my temple and I'm going to do everything I can to look after my temple. Like I would an altar, like I would a church, you know, like a martial artist would, you know, stepping into the dojo, keeping it clean, keeping it healthy, keeping it fresh, fresh flowers, fresh air, a place of devotion, a place of worship, a place of practice. Because that's what this is, this is what this temple is. It's a place of practice, a place of worship, a place of devotion, a place of love. So this is the first condition. 
of the seven conditions that I continually work on for myself. Sometimes I don't get it always right. But I can really stand in front of that mirror in reality and proverbially and say, I actually do love what I see. I love what I see. I've worked really hard on my physicality. Really hard. I'm in good shape, I'm fit, I'm healthy. I eat the right things. I drink good water. Personally, I don't do alcohol. I don't do drugs. I'm actually a vegetarian, not that that has a bearing on other people's choices, but I just find with my vegetarian diet, I'm a lot more clear, particularly spiritually. So these are choices one has to make, conscious choices. How do I want to live my life? How do I want to connect more deeply to spirit? And how can I make that happen? By making some changes in my life, either small changes, subtle changes, or some major changes. So I'd just like you to contemplate for a moment what I've shared with you. What is it you can do today to deepen that spiritual journey? So if you have a pen and paper with you, and if you haven't, maybe just go and grab, grab one for a moment. And you can always hit pause if you're listening to the recording. And then write down on a piece of paper a couple of things you know you have to bring into your life to deepen the spiritual practice. And maybe start with that first condition. What do I need to do physically? What do I have to do physically? How can I change the way I look? What do you have to do? It could be something hygienic. It could be some weight loss. It might be about getting fitter, healthier, change of diet, change of attitude towards yourself. It might be simply going to get a, a lovely haircut, changing the way you look, feeling good about oneself, feeling the self-love. And then ask yourself, how can I define my spiritual path? You know, and that could be by just naming it, Christian, Buddhist, whatever it is you're following, Hinduism, Muslim, whatever it is you're following. That might be the outer layer, just by giving it a name. But how do you then define that? What am I doing in my spiritual practice? Am I reading some spiritual text daily or second, every second day or every week? Am I going to a service? Or am I meeting with people? Am I meditating? Am I praying? Am I off service? So write down a few things that you're doing in terms of spiritual practice. Because it is a practice. It's a doing. So we do things in practice. Now for me, I do my daily meditation. I do my daily devotional. I'll read my spiritual texts, mostly around anthroposophical texts or Rosicrucianism or other interests. I'm just currently studying a little bit of the Ayurvedic path because my beautiful partner follows that path. She's got the Indian path, the Shakti path. And I'm slowly just learning a little bit so I can be in communication deep with her so I can understand her path as she'll learn some of what I follow so she can understand my path. And that's a beautiful dialogue, and we can share a certain amount of wisdom with each other so we can have more of a deeper understanding. But ultimately, all spirituality leads to the same place. There's a beautiful teacher called Bede Griffiths, who was a Christian who set up a ashram in India. And a beautiful thing he said, he said, there are, he held his hand up and he said, there are five major religions, and they all end up here. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what language, what culture, what teachings, they all really come to the same place. They all come to the same place. But it's good to define it for ourselves. What is my spiritual practice? What do I do daily? Because some people say, well, I, I go to church once a week on a Sunday. That's lovely. That's great. 
But is, it, is that a spiritual path? Or is that more of a social gathering? What do you need to do to bring yourself into the pathway of spirituality? Can you define it? Can you talk the language of your spiritual path? Because each pathway has a language and different mantras, different prayers, a different um, description of what one does. Even in my anthroposophical journey, which is Christian-based, Christ-based, it's quite different than some of the church conversation that one might have. So I ask you to just define it for yourself. What is my spiritual path? What is my spiritual path? Write a few things down, take some notes, and then you can refine that after you've uh, finished listening to the webinar or finished being here. Just take a couple of notes for now. Defining my spiritual path. Where am I right now on my spiritual path? Just write that down. They're good questions. This is deepening the understanding of spirit. Otherwise, it's just some loose concept that we carry around in our mind. I'm spiritual. Yeah, that's great. But what do you mean by that? Can you define that? Can you, you know, write a quick synopsis on that? Can you tell me what that is? Because a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. There's a lot of spiritual bypassing, I call it out there. That people have a, like a pseudo connection to the spiritual path. But when I try to engage in a deeper conversation with them, I realize it's quite often shallow, which is a real shame because it's a study, it's a discipline, it's a pathway. And as I explained before with the uh, story of um, if we walk on the beach and we start to paddle on the beach and we put our feet in the water, that's one level. And then we might go up to our knees and there's another level. And then up to our waist and there's another level. And then up to our shoulders in the, in the water. And then we submerge and we start to see things that we never saw before. And then we choose to go deeper so we snorkel and we go down and we see things we'd never seen before. And then we decide we want to go deeper so we do scuba diving. We go 5 metres, then 10 metres, then 15 and then 20 metres. And suddenly there's a whole new world under the water that we were totally unaware of. And spirituality is the same. There's so many levels, so many layers of spirituality. I call them initiation steps. We initiate ourselves on our spiritual path. Level one, level two, level three, all the way to the peak. And in a lot of traditions, there's a, you know, 33 levels of initiation. You may have heard that with the, the Masons, for instance. So there's many, 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 many layers. And when one follows one's spiritual practice, it doesn't matter what it is, we do go through a sense of initiation process, a learning, a schooling, to take us to different depths. And my intention is to support that journey so that we can deepen and deepen and deepen and deepen through the practice of spirituality not just a, a cognitive sense of it, but by doing, by engaging, by engaging the will. So daily devotion, daily prayer, daily meditation, daily text reading, daily service, whatever it is for you, but please see if you can define it. So that's pretty must the lesson today. So what I wanted to bring today was just that groundwork, that basic work. And I would encourage you to have this as your homework for a week. Have this for your homework. Perhaps get yourself a journal, a nice, beautiful book. And if you're going to tune in and make this a regular practice yourself working with me, you know, use that book, take notes. Re-listen to the recording. Write a few things down. Do the homework. Define the journey. 
challenge yourself, particularly on this you know, level one of the first condition of spiritual development, the physical body. Write down two or three or four things that you know you have to do. There might be a challenge to create this vessel, this spiritual vessel. So I hope that was useful, that little bit of wisdom for you, that little bit of insight for you, that little bit of direction for you. And I'd just like to open up, uh, we do have Kimmy here. Kimmy, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask from uh, from listening on that? No, it, it's self-explanatory. I, I understand how, how self, you, you have to think about you before you go with your spiritual journey and all that, yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice uh, uh, from someone else that's been doing it for a long time. So, yeah, thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, it's always good to uh, get a sense of you know, what I have to do to deepen my own spiritual journey. So, um, so for you, yeah, you'll take it away, um, see how you go with it, you know, to deepen and deepen and deepen because it's uh, different for all of us. But in okay. essence, we're all aiming for the same end point, that same journey is to be really, really, really in touch with our, you know, spirituality, you know, whether that's mm -hmm. God or source or universe or whatever one wants to call it. So, um, yeah. So I want to, I want to thank you, uh, Kemi, for jumping on. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be here for everybody uh, every Thursday. I'm going to make a point of being here at the same time, 10 a.m. in the UK, 7 p.m. in Australia. And for everybody else, please check your time zones. And I will be here again next week and I look forward to seeing you all then. So thank you very much for tuning in.